Hi, today I'm going to talk about nucleotic polymerase inhibitor sofosbuvir plus rivabirin for hepatitis C. Hepatitis C. Hepatitis C is a disease caused by a virus that infects the liver. In time, it can lead to permanent liver damage as well as cirrhosis, liver cancer, and liver failure. The causes of this are if you share needlets and other equipment used to inject illegal drugs, if you had a blood transfusion or organ transplant, if you get a shot with a needle that has infected blood on it, if you get a tattoo or a piercing with a needle that has infected blood on it. Now we're going to see a video. The virus replicates in the hepatocytes of the liver and circulates throughout the body. Entry into hepatocytes occurs through the interaction of the viral envelope with receptors on the surface of the host cell. The virus undergoes a fusion and uncoating spread, releasing positive strand viral RNA. HCV utilizes many of the host cells, proteins, and molecules in order to replicate. The first step is the translation of the viral RNA genome into a polyprotein. The polyprotein is processed by both host cell and viral proteases into structural and non-structural proteins. An essential step in the replication of viral RNA is the interaction of the host cell protein cyclophilin A with the viral proteins NS5A and NS5B. This enables the functional replication complex. A replication complex is now formed to generate new viral RNA. A negative strand RNA intermediate is formed and is used as a template for the synthesis of positive strand RNA. The viral RNA is then packaged to form new HCV virions. The virions mature in the Golgi apparatus and are released from the host cell by exocytosis. Now we're going to see the causes. Hepatitis C is a serious public health issue in Europe and is considered a silent disease due to its high prevalence, long-term unpredictable disease progression, aging population, and low diagnosis and treatment rates. We are going to be answering the following questions. What is Hepatitis C? What are the consequences of having it? How common is it? What are the symptoms? And who is at risk? So what exactly is hepatitis C? Well, it refers to a group of viral infections that affect the liver. Hepatitis C is one of the most common viral liver diseases. And yet there is currently no available vaccine for it. Hepatitis C has six identified genotypes, with genotype 1 being the most common in Europe and the most difficult to treat. Hepatitis C has also been associated with numerous hematological, renal, dermatologic, rheumatic, autoimmune, and brain disorders. Chronic hepatitis C can result in serious long-term health problems. Approximately 30% of individuals will develop progressive liver disease, including cirrhosis and liver cancer. Chronic hepatitis C is the most common reason for liver transplants in Europe. Worldwide, approximately 170 million people are infected with hepatitis C. In Western Europe, an estimated 5 million people are infected, while numbers are thought to be even higher in Eastern Europe. During the first six months, or the acute stage, there may be no obvious symptoms and most patients are unaware for decades that they have hepatitis C. 
during the chronic stage, the most common symptom is fatigue. And many people initially diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome are later found to have hepatitis C. Other symptoms may include weight loss, loss of appetite, joint pain, nausea, flu-like symptoms, anxiety, difficulty concentrating, alcohol intolerance, or pain in the liver area. Approximately 60 to 80 percent of people infected with hepatitis C have no symptoms at all. Hepatitis C is spread through blood contact. Before blood supplies started to be screened in 1992, it was commonly spread through blood transfusions and organ transplants. Today, most people become infected with hepatitis C by sharing needles or other equipment used to inject drugs. Also at risk are those who have been exposed to improperly sanitized equipment like lasers, toothbrushes, body piercing and tattoo equipment, those who have had sexual contact with an infected person, and children born to infected mothers. Contact with infected blood can also happen during invasive medical procedures and other procedures where the skin is broken. Now that you know more about this widespread disease, if you suspect that you might have it, then you should ask your doctor for a test. The treatment. The stunt, the stunt treatment of, for hepatitis C virus infection is a uh, interferon, which is administered subcutaneously and can have troublesome side effects like fever, malaise, tachycardia, child head cake, Arthralgias and myalgias. <laughs> Hepatitis C is nucleotide polymerase inhibitor sofosbuvir, an orally available nucleotide prodrug and an hepatitis C virus polymerase inhibitor with potential HCV in the inhibiting activity. One of them uh, is the ribavirin. It's an antiviral drug. It is used in combination with interferon for the treatment of chronic hepatitis C. (laughs) 
The hepatitis C virus, HCV, is one of the leading causes of chronic liver disease and is a leading indication for liver transplant. The current standard of care for the treatment of genotype 1 chronic HCV infection is a triple drug regimen of pegylated interferon plus ribavirin plus a protease inhibitor. Although effective in 68 to 75 percent of treatment naive patients, the tolerability and dosing schedules of currently available treatment regimens may restrict use in some patients. The development of safer and or more effective investigational compounds is ongoing. Our increasing understanding of the HCV life cycle has revealed a number of potential targets for pharmacologic intervention. The hepatitis C virus, a positive single-strand RNA virus, enters the body via the bloodstream and targets the hepatocytes. The virus binds to the hepatocyte via a specific interaction between the viral structural proteins and liver cell-specific receptors on the hepatocyte cell surface. The virus then enters the hepatocyte via receptor-mediated endocytosis. Once inside the hepatocyte, the viral membrane fuses with the endosomal membrane, releasing the viral RNA into the cell cytoplasm. The viral RNA then travels through the cytoplasm to the endoplasmic reticulum, where it is translated by host ribosomes, resulting in the formation of the hepatitis C polyprotein within the endoplasmic reticulum membrane. The resulting HCV polyprotein consists of 10 structural and non-structural proteins that play essential roles in the virus life cycle and represent potential targets for pharmacologic intervention. The NS3 and NS5B protein have thus been key targets for antiviral drug development. NS3 consists of a C-terminal helicase domain and an N-terminal serine protease domain, which together with NS4A is responsible for the cleavage of all downstream non-structural proteins, an essential step in the HCV replication process. The non-structural proteins, together with host proteins, form the replication complex that facilitates the production of new viral RNA. The newly formed RNA is then packaged and assembled into new viral particles, which are then released from the cell to go on to infect other hepatocytes. Agents being developed for use in the treatment of chronic hepatitis C include compounds that inhibit NS3 protease. Valdaprevir is an investigational NS3 protease inhibitor that has a linear tripeptide structure with a C-terminal carboxylic acid group which forms a non-covalent complex with the active site of NS3 protease. This in turn prevents the cleavage of the HCV polyprotein and thus the release of the non-structural proteins necessary for the production of viral RNA, resulting in a reduction in viral replication. Phase two studies with feldaprevir as a part of combination therapy with pegylated interferon and ribavirin have been completed. Phase three studies are nearing completion the second non-structural protein that has received much attention as a potential target for pharmacologic intervention is the NS5B polymerase. The NS5B polymerase is the catalytic center of the HCV replication complex where it is directly responsible for RNA synthesis. Like other viral polymerases, NS5B has the right-hand structure with palm, finger, and thumb domains. There are at least four allosteric binding sites on the polymerase, making thumb pockets one and two, and palm sites one and two. The investigational agent, BI207127, is a non-nucleoside thumb pocket one inhibitor. By binding to the thumb pocket one site of NS5B polymerase, BI207127 blocks the conformational changes to the enzyme that are necessary for RNA synthesis. With their complementary mechanisms of action, BI207127, in combination with Faldaprevir and ribavirin, is being studied as part of an interferon-free regimen. Phase three studies investigating the safety and efficacy of this regimen are currently initiating with the goal of delivering an interferon-free treatment to patients with chronic hepatitis C. But what about nucleotic polymerase inhibitors of phosphovir plus berberin for hepatitis C? Is this good or not? The advantage of this 
treatment, sulfosbenir plus rivabarin for 12 weeks may be effective in previously untreated patients with hepatitis C genotype 1, 2, or 3 infection. Hi, I'm, I'm Cheryl, Cheryl Bale, and I'm, I'm a nurse, nurse practitioner in hepatology. hepatology. Today, I'm going, I'm going to talk, talk about peg interferon and ribavirin for the treatment of hepatitis C. C. You can, can visit, visit our website, www.liverinfo.com, and print off a copy of our peg interferon and ribavirin pictopamphlet to follow along with this video. Peg interferon is also known as Pegasus or Pegatron. Peg interferon is taken by an injection under the skin just once a week. A nurse can teach you how to give the injections, and a friend or a family member can also help with your injections. Ribavirin is taken in a pill form twice a day. There are four things you need to do when taking peg interferon and ribavirin. You should discuss these with your doctor. First, it is important to get regular blood tests. This is to make sure the medicine isn't affecting your blood counts. Second, alcohol can interfere with peg interferon. It is best to avoid all alcohol. Third, peg interferon can make it slightly harder for you to fight off infections. It is best to call your doctor or nurse if you develop a fever or think you have an infection. And finally, don't get pregnant or breastfeed while taking peg interferon and ribavirin. Ribavirin can harm an unborn child. The most common side effect of peg interferon is flu-like symptoms, such as feeling unwell, feeling tired, having a low-grade fever, chills, achy muscles and joints, and headaches. This is common within the first one to two days after each injection. Peg interferon can also cause a skin reaction at the injection site. Let your doctor and nurse know if these become severe. Some people also feel generally weak and tired throughout their treatment with peg interferon. Peg interferon and ribavirin can sometimes cause a loss of appetite and weight loss. Let your doctor and nurse know if any of these side effects become severe. Let your doctor and nurse know if you feel irritable or anxious, or experiencing worsening of depression, or thoughts of suicide while taking peg interferon. Also, tell your doctor and nurse if you develop shortness of breath or chest pain. Peg interferon has rarely been associated with thyroid and blood sugar problems. Your doctor can look for these with a simple blood test. Finally, peg interferon and ribavirin very rarely cause a rash or thinning of the hair. If you're taking peg interferon and ribavirin, you should call your doctor if you feel sick and want to stop, if you're concerned about any side effects, or if you've stopped or want to stop the medication for any reason. There are other specific reasons to call your doctor or nurse. If you have chest pain or shortness of breath, if you feel depressed or have thoughts of suicide, if you become pregnant, if you have any changes in your vision, and finally, if you develop a rash. I hope you found this video to be useful. For more information, please refer to... And the disadvantage of this is that you can have head catch, fatigue, insomnia, nausea, rash, and anemia, also urethral injury and foreign colosis. I hope you will learn a little more about hepatitis C and its treatment. Thank you.